Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at a game that is in Polish. Uh, we're going to take a look at, however you say this, uh, this is Mysterium, which will be coming out uh, in the United States around Gen Con, but is currently published by Portal Games uh, and available in Polish, Ukrainian, and I think French. Uh, so we'll be looking at the Polish version today uh, using those rule set. Now this is a game in which uh, one player plays a silent ghost who is haunting a mansion, giving information to people that are in that mansion about a murder that took place as far as I can tell um, and so that ghost is trying to give out information to each of these players about a person place and thing uh, and trying to get them to guess those and then finally at the end of the game there will be a final cooperative guess uh, to determine who the murder is and you must do so uh, in a specific amount of rounds using only cards with some very abstract art on them uh, so this is a cooperative game between all of the players so real quick why don't we take a look at what you get inside of this box we'll see how the game plays and we'll come back at the end and get my opinions on Mysterium. So here you can see the components of Mysterium set up for a four-player game. In this game, one player is going to be a silent ghost player who won't be able to talk, but is trying to tell the investigators uh, information about this haunted mansion that they're in, uh, the location of where they're all at, uh, the location or the person that they are, and the item that was used uh, for their character. So each person's got like their own story, basically. Uh, and in the end, you'll be trying to guess which one of these people that you're guessing throughout the game is the culprit. Uh, it's a little bit strange, but basically a murder took place and uh, the ghost is telling you a bunch of things. But anyhow, uh, throughout the game, uh, there are these different cards that you'll see here. At the top here, we've selected six possible items or weapons. So we have like a, a syringe, kind of a fork thing, a cricket bat, an iron, some barbells, and what looks to be a gas canister. Uh, and there's a bunch of different items that could have been selected. They're all in this deck. Uh, but these get chosen randomly at the start. Six is for the easy game. We've also chosen six locations. You can see them kind of here. Uh, I'll put them up a little bit closer, at least one of them. So you can see we have kind of this uh, drawing room here. We got some art going on. And there's several different aspects of this picture that are kind of interesting and could be potentially hinted to by clues. Finally, there are going to be six people. Uh, these people have different characteristics as well. For example, we have some type of uh, driver. We have a fisherman. We have a tailor uh, and various other professions out here, even a nun. Now, all of these cards that are on display here have also been separated from some decks of cards from the Ghost. So the Ghost has all of these exact same cards in their decks. And um, they've pulled out the exact same cards and mixed them up, and they've assigned each player green, yellow, and blue, one of these people, one of these rooms, and one of these items. And the players are going to be trying to guess these throughout the game. Each player is represented by a board that you can see right here. These boards are basically going to say on the top, what, where, and who. And so for first, each player is going to be trying to guess which item they have in their pile of cards. After they've guessed that, they're going to move on and be trying to guess where they're at. And then the third is going to be who they are. So once you've guessed all of those, you'll move on to the next round. Now, how is this going to work? Well, the ghost player is going to be using a bunch of cards. They're actually going to have a hand of six cards, uh, and they're going to be using these cards to try and describe to the players where they're at. So each player, or what they have, or who they are, whatever the step they might be on. So first, items. So each player has a set of three cards that they're trying to be hinted for. So for example, the blue player here has the fork, they are in this room, kind of a child's playroom with dolls, uh, and they are the nun. So they're trying to guess all three of these things, item first. The ghost, on their turn, in the first round of seven rounds in the game, uh, will be trying to hint to this person that they are having the fork. So they may try and find something in one of these images, and they're very abstract kind of images. You'll see this one is a wrench with some little tools around it. This one is a bunch of animals inside of the pocket of a coat. Uh, we have some type of weird porcupine on top of a mushroom. Uh, we have a boat with a person inside of it or in a bathtub with another boat. Uh, and just weird pictures all around. Very strange and abstract art that could mean anything. Using no words and only these cards, the ghost is trying to hint to this player that they have the fork. So they may try and find items, since this is really kind of one of two pointed items, try and find like pokey things, right? They're trying to get their point across. Maybe they choose this porcupine uh, and they give it to the blue player. Uh, and maybe 
they're trying to get multiple things across. So they say, you know, it's pokey uh, and it's also blue. They choose the blue card because the fork is blue. And um, they give those two cards to the player without saying anything. From these cards, all of the players can try and decide which one of these items that player is holding. And once they've made a decision, they would put their marker on that card. So blue is saying, okay, I think that I have the fork. While they're doing this, the ghost player would draw their hand back up to six cards and try and give cards to the other players to hint onto their things. So maybe they hint that uh, some cards to the yellow player and the green player, and the yellow player thinks that they've got the barbell, or barbell and the green player thinks they have the cricket bat. Uh, after giving out all of the cards. So you can give as many cards as you want to each player. Uh, but remember, you're trying to be specific enough with your hints and your images to get the people to guess which item they have without saying anything. Now, once everybody's been given their cards and they've chosen their item in this case for the first round, they're going to go ahead and the ghost is going to reveal how well they've guessed. So for example, they would go and they'd show, for example, if blue had gotten their guess right, they would reveal the fork here and blue would be correct. And blue would move their marker down from what or item down to where. And so now the next round, they'd be guessing where they're at. If the other players were wrong, say for example, the yellow player, had the cricket bat, oh, unfortunately green guessed cricket bat, so that's incorrect, and green guessed iron, well, or, sorry, green guessed cricket bat, but had the iron, so they're wrong as well. So first thing we can do is we can remove this fork card from the lineup. We know that nobody has the fork because blue had the fork, so it can't possibly be the other two players. However, now the other two players, green and yellow, know that they don't have the items that they were on, and in the future rounds, it'll be easier for them to guess which item they might have. So. From this point on, only the blue player will be guessing their location. The other two players will continue guessing which item they have. If they had cards left over from the previous round, let's say that they had these two cards, the players would keep those cards for the next round and more cards could be added to them for the guess. However, we now advance onto the second round and there are seven rounds for the players to get all the way through the game by guessing first their item, then their location, then their person. Once all three players have progressed down and guessed their person, the three people from the game are then chosen. So let's see, our three people are the nun, the, the uh, I don't know what she is, and the fisherman. So once the three people are guessed, our player, ghost player, would then shuffle these three cards up and choose one of them. So one of the cards would be chosen, uh, and that would be set out aside. And now the players have until the end of the round, so let's say they finished by round five, guessing all three of their items, locations, and people. They now have until the end of round seven to guess this last person. But the player who's playing the ghost will be hinting with cards for only that card. So they'll be trying to hint for that card using their hand of cards, just like before, to get the players to jointly guess which person this is. And if they are able to get the person to guess what this is, they will win the game. Uh, and as I should have stated at the beginning, this is a cooperative game. So the ghost and all of the players playing the investigators are trying to work together to solve this puzzle, puzzle before time runs out. So you might think that that's not very replayable, but it actually is quite replayable because all of these cards can be different from game to game, the items, the locations, and the people, and there are big decks for each of all of those. But in addition, you can increase the number of items that are in each of these selection areas. So if you wanna make it harder, you can have seven or eight items, seven or eight locations, even more if you would like, in order to increase the pool and make it more generic as to which of your cards might be hinting to what item, location, or person. So basically, you're going to go through the rounds trying to complete your guesses and be correct before time runs out. And if you do, you will win Mysterium. And there you have it. That is Mysterium from Portal Games. Uh, now, I didn't know what I was gonna think of this game because the game has its roots in a game that I do not enjoy and that everybody else seems to enjoy. Uh, but I uh, digs it. I don't like digs it. I think the artwork's interesting, but I just didn't get the game. It wasn't my thing. I wasn't creative enough or whatever it might be. Uh, this game takes digs it and combines it with clue, uh, where you're trying to guess a person, place, or thing, and then makes it cooperative on top of that. So to start off, it had two negative things going for it, digs it, and cooperative. Uh, despite that, the game shines. It really does. I can understand why it's so, so popular right now and so desirable. Uh, the game is really very good. Um, the fact that one player is trying to abstractly use these cards to give information about uh, different 
you know, places, people, things uh, on the board and try and get the other players to guess what they're thinking. Uh, it's kind of a unique uh, play on psychology. So you're trying to use this psychology of, you know, is it the hue of the card, the color? Is it something within the card that they're using to hint? Is it just this combination of feelings that they have from these cards that kind of hints it out? Uh, and so that makes it an interesting game where at the same time the ghost is getting super frustrated with the players and the players are getting super frustrated with the ghost for not giving them clear enough hints. Uh, it scales well because you can have a very easy game with fewer cards or a much harder game with more cards uh, and yet the rules don't really change at all for that difficulty increase. You just add more cards to the game. So overall this is a game you can play with a family, it's a game you can play with gamers, it's even a game that you could play with kids pretty easily because uh, they can even understand understand some of the concepts you're trying to grasp from the art. Uh, so overall, great game, one that I definitely suggest you check out, even if you're not a fan of cooperative games or a fan of Digsit. Uh, I think that Mysterium shines through regardless. So check it out. That's Mysterium from Portal Games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.